Hi, I'm Pastor Jack Davidson from Redeemer Lutheran Church in Lancaster, Ohio. I'd like to welcome you to our abbreviated worship service for Sunday, August 23rd, 2020. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Over the next 10 weeks, I'll be preaching a sermon series on the book of Zechariah. Zechariah is one of the minor prophets, one of the 12 minor prophets of the Old Testament. And so our readings for the day, particularly on this abbreviated worship service, will be from Zechariah. Today, our text is from Zechariah chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. Zechariah writes under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, In the eighth month, the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came to the prophet Zechariah, son of Berechiah, son of Idu, saying, The Lord was very angry with your fathers. Therefore say to them, Thus declares the Lord of hosts, Return to me, says the Lord of hosts, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. Do not be like your fathers, to whom the former prophets cried out. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Return from your evil ways, and from your evil deeds. But they did not hear or pay attention to me, declares the Lord. Your fathers, where are they? And the prophets, do they live forever? But my words and my statutes, which I commanded my servants, the prophets, did they not overtake your fathers? So they repented and said, as the Lord of hosts purposed to deal with us for our ways and deeds, so he has dealt with us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of Jesus Christ, fellow redeemed. So today we begin a sermon series over the next 10 weeks on the book of Zechariah. I'm titling this sermon series, Your Kingdom Come. I think it's always beneficial that when we're reading the Old Testament, we look at the context, we look at the history behind the book and why the prophet is writing the things that he's writing so that we can better understand them for our situation today. So to set the scene for what Zechariah writes, it would be helpful to review a little bit of Old Testament history. The kingdoms of Israel and Judah were taken into Babylon to live in exile. The last kingdom to fall was Judah, and they fell in 587 B.C. At that time, 587 B.C., the entire city of Jerusalem, all the surrounding cities, and the temple that Solomon built were utterly destroyed. God allowed this to happen because the people turned their backs on God. They worshipped other gods, foreign idols. Now, Ezekiel and Daniel were two of the prophets during the exile, during these 70 years. And when you read of, from Zechariah, excuse me, when you read from Ezekiel and Daniel, they will talk about the events that took place during the exile. After the exile, after 70 years, Zechariah and another prophet, Haggai, come onto the scene. Haggai and Zechariah are two contemporary prophets. They are preaching or proclaiming the word of God at about the same time. And so this book, Zechariah chapter 1, was written about 520 B.C., 520 years before the time of Christ. The people started to begin to return home. And you can read these events in the Old Testament books, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. As they begin to rebuild their lives, Haggai the prophet encourages the people to rebuild the temple that Solomon originally built but was destroyed by the Babylonians 70 years earlier. Now, Zechariah is a prophet at this time as well. The people of Judah want to rebuild their lives. They want to rebuild the city, they want to rebuild the temple. And quickly, but God says to the prophet Zechariah, not so fast. Their efforts stall for 17 years. 
They originally started to build the temple, and yet they had to wait for 17 years, in part because there was infighting among the Judaites and the Samaritans over where the temple was going to be built. The Samaritans wanted the temple built on their land for economic reasons. And the Judaites wanted the temple built in Jerusalem, again, for economic reasons, but also this is where Solomon had built his temple. So they fought over where the temple was to be placed because the temple was going to bring money and jobs to the area. Kind of sounds like today when cities are fighting over a company such as Amazon to build a plant in their neck of the woods. They were going to rebuild the temple in haste because they wanted to get their lives going again. When they started to finally rebuild the temple, though, God told them, not so fast. You need to put first things first. You see, the Judaites thought that if they would rebuild the temple, this would be pleasing to God. And so they made great haste to rebuild the temple. But as they were doing so, their hearts were far away from where God wanted them to be. They needed to learn to put first things first. And now here we are in the month of August, and if you watch the weather at any time during the month of August, or you remember watching the weather in September and October, you know that we're in hurricane season. If you watch the Weather Channel, like I love to watch the Weather Channel, you'll see these pictures of beach houses uh, having their frontage and backyards on the beach, and you see them destroyed by the wind and wave of a hurricane. And then you see the foundation crumbling and the houses washed out in the sea. Uh, they wash away because they're not built on a solid foundation. Now, Jesus warns you and me about building our spiritual house on a solid foundation. He says in Matthew chapter 7, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall, because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell, and the floods came, the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. This is what Zechariah is trying to teach the people of his day. This is the word of the Lord that God gave to Zechariah to preach and to proclaim to the people of his generation. A building is only as good as the foundation. Zechariah and the people of his day were trying to get back to normal, so to speak. They wanted God's kingdom to come, but now it's 520 years before the time of Christ. The Babylonians had destroyed the temple in 587 BC, and the people naturally thought, God's kingdom will come if we just rebuild the temple. After all, that's what God said through the prophet Haggai, go up to the hills and bring wood and build the house. It was time to rebuild the temple. Now, you and I all know about the feeling that we have when we look at broken timbers and busted bricks. So what's been destroyed in your life, even during this time of the pandemic? Where has the pandemic wrecked havoc in your life? In a relationship? In a loss of income? In your job? Your health? Your family? Your future? Is your emotional well-being frayed? God has called all of us to build something special in our lives. It may not be newsworthy. You may not get headlines on Fox News or CNN or get an article in Time magazine. But it is important to build lives in the foundation of God and his word. It's important today to raise children who are Christian. If you're a grandparent, it's important to reflect those Christian values, and to teach your grandchildren about Jesus. It's important to be an honest and hardworking person, to be ethical in all your relationships, to study God's Word with regularity, and to keep the Sabbath day holy. It's time to build, and that's how God's people build today. 
But not so fast. That's how Zechariah begins his book. The Lord says in verse 3, Return to me and I will return to you. A building is only as good as its foundation. Before we build, we need a solid foundation. First things first. That's the way it works in life. First you do your homework, and then you get to go out to play. You plow the ground, you plant the seed, and then comes the harvest. Save your money, then buy a car. Exercise, and then go have a hot fudge sundae. Lay the foundation, and then build. And if we don't do that, the whole thing comes tumbling down. If we build our lives trying to make a name for ourselves, if pride and pretense are a part of our foundation, then whatever we might build will be washed away. Like a beach house built on the sand that's washed away during a hurricane. A building is only as good as its foundation. And the foundation has two parts. The first part of the foundation is this. In verse 3 of Zechariah, chapter 1, we read, Return to me, says the Lord of armies. The building of the temple will be in vain unless God's people return to the Lord. To rebuild the temple, thinking that God's going to be pleased with you uh, because you're doing an outward act. Well, your heart still is not set right with the Lord. And that invites disaster. That's what got the people in trouble in the first place. The people's fundamental need wasn't a rebuilt temple. It was a renewed heart. So what does it mean to return to the Lord? It means to repent. To turn around, you're going in the wrong direction. You need to turn around and go in the right direction. Turn around, because if you don't, there's disaster around the bend. To repent doesn't mean to be nice or to play nice or to try harder. It means to take God and his word with utmost seriousness. Repent. Confess your sins. Come clean before God. Be honest. It's easy for us as Christians to ignore the need to repent. All too often we don't pray for it. We don't listen for it. A great many times we don't do it. But we can't build a life of mercy and faithfulness apart from heeding God's call to repent. And if we don't change, we build a house built on sinking sand. So we need to listen to Zechariah. He says, Don't be like your ancestors to whom the former prophets cried out. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Repent from your evil ways and turn from your evil deeds. But they did not hear or pay attention to me, declares the Lord. The danger, Zechariah writes, is to be like the fathers and mothers who in the days of Jeremiah relied on the temple and refused to repent. They went through the motions of being religious, but their hearts were far from the Lord. Just as Jeremiah writes in Jeremiah chapter 7, this is the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. The temple needs to be rebuilt, no doubt, but the temple needs to have a solid foundation, and that means repentance and faith. Zechariah said they repented, they returned to me. They believed in the Lord, but how did that happen? happened through confession. Confession isn't telling God what he doesn't already know. He knows everything already. Confession is not complaining about your lot in life. It isn't blaming and pointing fingers at somebody else. That isn't confession. Here's what confession is all about. It's what David writes in Psalm 51. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. The prodigal son says, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. The tax collector says, God, be merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Here's my confession. It's easy for me to go through the motions in my devotional life. I hurriedly read through the scriptures every day, and a lot of times I hurry through the reading of the scriptures, and I don't pause, I don't stop to meditate, and I don't pause to stop to, to, to hear what God is saying to me. I use my devotions as a checklist. 
something that I've done, and so I check it off the list if I have it done. I'm doing that, and I play the part of the hypocrite. My heart isn't right with the Lord. I'm a two-faced pretender. I've preached sermons about people like me, people who go through the motions and say the right words, but their hearts are far from God, galaxies from God. I need to slow down when I read the scriptures. We all need to slow down and listen to the word of God, to slow down, to hear God's law and gospel, to confess our sins, to return, to repent. You need some scripture? Romans chapter 3. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Building is only good as its foundation. Zechariah's foundation has two parts. Return to me, says the Lord of armies. That's the first part. And the second part is, I will return to you. That's the second part, the good news. But how does God return to us? He returns to us in Jesus Christ. I have a woodcut in my office. When you look at it, you see just a jumbled up mess. But when you focus clearly on the woodcut, then you see the words, Jesus. That's why we need to listen to the book of Zechariah. That's why I'm preaching on the book of Zechariah over these next 10 weeks. We need to look at, we need to focus on Jesus. For Jesus is our King who comes to us righteous and humble. The blood of his covenant sets us free. People detest Jesus. People try to sell Jesus for 30 shekels of silver. The sheep try to strike the shepherd, and the flock is scattered. They'll look upon Jesus, whom they've pierced. These are all Bible passages that we will be looking at based on the book of Zechariah. Zechariah tells us that God loves us with a steadfast love, with an everlasting love, that he cleanses us, he gives us full and complete pardon for all of our sins, and it's all on account of the Savior that God's going to send. It's all on account of the one whom Jeremiah is preaching about. His book is all about, it's all about Jesus. Jesus is that solid foundation that you and I and the world needs because a building is only as good as its foundation. Edward Mott knows. In 1834, he composed a hymn, My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. No merit of my own I claim, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Jesus, the foundation to build upon. Jesus' blood and righteousness for all other ground is sinking sand. We bow our heads now and pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the blessing of the Lord our God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you always. Amen. You've been watching an abbreviated worship service from Redeemer Lutheran Church in Lancaster, Ohio. We're located at 1400 Concordia Drive in Lancaster, Ohio. Our worship service is Sunday morning at 1015. We invite you to join us in worship. If you're looking for a church home, please consider making Redeemer your church home. We would love to have you as a part of our church family. Once again, you're watching an abbreviated worship service from Redeemer Lutheran Church. You can find us on our YouTube channel or on Facebook. And if you would care to support this ministry, we would certainly appreciate it. May the Lord bless you and keep you until we see you again next week.